You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Today, we're going to go over intermittent fasting. And why I decided to do this show today was this, is that intermittent fasting is quickly becoming one of the most popular, we'll call it so-called diet plans out there. It's in the media. Whenever anything actually gets into the media, I get a little worried because what happens is we take something that, you know, in its true essence is absolutely fantastic. And it can do so much to revolutionize your health, really, and also anti-aging as well. When we look at anti-cancer studies and we look at aging studies, meaning like how do we age more gracefully and how do we live longer? We can see that intermittent fasting helps with that. But what we do, especially in the US, is we take whatever that concept is and we just take it 10 times that level and 10 times that level isn't always necessarily good. So I want to explain myself today. So what this is, is if you don't know what intermittent fasting is or you maybe just heard about it in passing, intermittent fasting is simply this. You're going a specific period of time without actually consuming any food or anything else except for water. Water, meaning like no calories, no fat, no protein, nothing that would affect your blood sugar levels. So of course, carbohydrates as well. So a lot of people now they're doing this. They're going from, let's say, 12 hours, let's say from 7 o'clock at night to 7 in the morning, that would be a 12-hour intermittent fast. Some people are going from after dinner around 7 o'clock at night to noon the next day. So that's going to be somewhere around 15 hours or 16 hours or so. 16 hours is a very popular one. And then other people are going all the way until dinner the next night. They're only having one meal per day. So there's been a lot of books that have popularized this with the Warrior's Diet and other books as well. So what people are doing is this. They're taking a study. They're taking research that shows that if we go for a specific period of time fasting without food, that our body actually produces its macrophages and other immune cells that help to clear pathogens, antibacterial, antifungal, natural killer cells. And they actually, these immunoglobulins, as well as other immune-based cells, have actually been shown to cause autophagy in cancer cells. That means basically apoptosis. That means cellular destruction of these harmful things as an chronic tissue, the things that would cause disease, fasting helps to eliminate. So there's so much great science behind it. So meaning this, this is what I'm just going to give you. This is what I recommend in my practice. And I want to talk about why we might not want to do more than that. Okay. So what I recommend right now in my practice is this. I recommend people go from seven at night to seven in the morning or eight at night to eight in the morning or six at night to six in the morning. I like people to go 12 hours overnight fasted. And I'm going to tell you why in just a few moments. But right now, the biggest trend is this skipping breakfast altogether and fasting from, let's say, seven o'clock or so at night till noon the next day. And everyone's trying, not everyone, but you know, one of the most popular things is this. People are trying to fit all their food into a small window from around 12 o'clock to six o'clock, 12 o'clock to eight o'clock. That's their feeding time. So it's this very small window. So what I want to say is this, is that I understand the idea of that. I, I do. I, it actually makes sense to me is that you're trying to prolong the fasted state because you want to get more of those fasting-based benefits. Here's the issue, though, is that during ancient times, they used fasting for a period of 24 hours, 48 hours, a week, two weeks, three weeks. There was many long periods of fast that people would go through depending on their health condition. Here's what they don't tell you, though. During those fasted periods, they were lying in bed. They were resting. They literally were on doctor's orders of bed rest. They would maybe meditate outside. They would sit by a stream. There were all these clinics that people would go to, like Herbert Sheldon's clinic specifically, where he fasted over 35,000 people. I learned specifically from his work. I learned from Ayurvedic studies, Ayurvedic medicine. So uh, believe me, I know the traditions of fasting. And it was back then, it was only water fasting. There was no other types of detoxification-based fasting. Sure, there are herbs that people use, but mainly it was water-based fasting. Here's the issue now. We can't just water fast for a week, two weeks, three weeks at a time. And one of the reasons is this. 
our liver can literally not handle the onslaught of chemicals that it filters every day in your blood from the environment. And 150, 200 years ago, you didn't have these man-made synthetic chemicals. You didn't have the VOCs. You didn't have the glyphosate. You didn't have all the PCBs, the bisphenol A. You know, you didn't have all these things that are literally chemicals in the environment. And there are now over 100,000 of them. You just breathe it in through the air. You take it in through your skin, right? Literally, it's porous. It just moves right through your skin. And you're exposed to it all the food and the water that you drink. So what happens is when you are detoxing, when you are fasting, that includes overnight as well, your liver, your liver is what filters that. It needs the most amount of support. So we talk about what's called phase one and phase two liver support, which is simply vitamins and sulfur-based amino acids and glutamine and zinc and all these other great things that you've heard about me talk before. So Here's what I really want to say today is that there's a reason why I don't recommend the skipping breakfast, okay? Keep in mind, I literally only do in my practice what is going to get people the best results. And I don't care if that goes against current thinking or what we'll call biohacking right now. And if you haven't heard of biohacking, which is really making intermittent fasting popular, because again, intermittent fasting has been around thousands of years. It's literally in all religions. It's in all medical practices. So except for conventional medicine, which is always interesting as well. And I did, this was about seven years ago, I did a seven day water only fast. Now, again, I don't recommend that to you. This is before I really dug deep into detoxification and how much more your liver needs. Because during that seven day fast, although beneficial, I could have done it better. Water only was not the best way to go. What happened was I went through a lot of muscle wasting. I lost a lot of muscle during that time. I had a lot of die off based reactions. I had a lot of Herxheimer based reactions. I had issues controlling my blood pressure. Wasn't my finest moment. However, I learned a lot from it and I do always experiment on myself first. The problem with biohackers who don't necessarily know a lot about biology and haven't really studied natural medicine or medicine in general is they're doing these things and then they're just writing about them in books and on the internet, online, whatever it might be. And they're giving you this information, but they have no advanced background in this type of study. So just because they do it and they fast and skip breakfast and they feel fantastic doesn't mean that that's a good thing. And I want to talk about that right now. So here's what happens physiologically when you begin to fast. If you skip breakfast, ordinarily what happens is when you go to bed at night, your cortisol levels drop, or at least they should drop around 10 p.m. And that goes for everyone. And again, I'll talk about diurnal rhythms, which means just your energy waves during the day, but they should drop and really drop after 4 p.m. to all the way around 10 p.m. where cortisol is almost at zero. So that allows you to get into a nice deep sleep. It allows the parasympathetic nervous system to turn on. Remember, there are two branches to the nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So when you turn turn on the parasympathetic nervous system, it allows for healing. It allows for rejuvenation, for regeneration of cells, for this thing called autophagy to take place where dangerous cancer cells that are forming your body can be eliminated. And that can only happen when you're not putting new food in and when you're in a relaxed state. So you do really try to get to bed as close to that 10 p.m. hour as you can, or even earlier if able to. But what happens is this, around 4 a.m. cortisol starts to rise. Around 6 a.m. it's going to peak out for most people. And when it peaks, Peaks, that's right around sunrise. So that's normal. That's natural. And that's because you want melatonin to stop being produced, which gets produced when it's dark out. Again, shut down those electronics, room darkening blinds, all of those things. Allow melatonin to be produced. That's the anti-cancer hormone. It's a powerful antioxidant. It helps us sleep. And then as that starts to go down, cortisol starts to rise. Cortisol should naturally rise to wake us up. Now, If you're like myself, who used to suffer from debilitating chronic fatigue and adrenal-based fatigue, my cortisol levels would never rise. And so I woke up groggy and I would have to wake up by an alarm clock. Now I can just wake up naturally at around 5 o'clock, 5.30 every single day. And I don't need that alarm clock. And again, do wake up naturally because my own cortisol has kicked back in and and I start to feel that energy rise. That should be the same for everyone. Here's the problem though. It's going to continue to rise and again, peak out right around that 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock hour. And then after that, it starts to dip, but, and that's normal, but if you get into a fasted state, meaning like if you skip breakfast, but, and this is an important one, you are not in a rested state, meaning like you are not lying in bed, you are not meditating, you're not just doing yoga, and you're battling instead rush hour traffic, getting the kids ready, thinking about your meetings at work, everything that you have to do for the day, that's more stress on top of the stress naturally that's being produced. Your cortisol levels are a natural form of stress. That's, that's normal. That's natural. Us fighting rush hour traffic, the 
getting the kids to school, that's unnatural stress. That's just added, added extra stress. And then if you're fasted, well, fasting increases cortisol to an even greater level. So I just want to see, can you start to see even just from a regular, I just call it a common sense perspective. And again, I know it's not really common sense because this is talking about biology and chemistry and biochemistry. But what happens is if we start to compound stress inside of our body, what happens is this, our blood sugar level actually rises no matter what, even if we're not taking in sugar. That's what these biohackers don't know. That's what they don't haven't studied. Here's the thing. And studies show this. And, and I'll talk about, well, why don't I talk about the study right now? Because a lot of people, you know, they want to, they want the science. And again, I want to give that, but I want to stay balanced. I don't believe that you want things talked about in terms of like biochemistry and all the things you want the action plan. You want what to do. And I understand that. And that's what I want to give you. But there's a study and a really, really important. It's on PubMed and it's called the effects of adrenaline on whole body glucose metabolism and insulin mediated regulation of glycogen synthase in PKB phosphorylation in human skeletal muscle. Now, again, most people don't care about that at all, but I'm just giving you the abstract. And the abstract says this, when your body goes into a fasted state, and this is a deep fasted state, your body begins to produce more than 50% more than it ordinarily would, 50% more adrenaline than it typically would. That means like when you get cut off in traffic, your, your blood boils, right? That's adrenaline being produced. And then cortisol, norepinephrine, adrenaline come first from the adrenal medulla. The adrenal cortex then pumps out cortisol, and then we're in full-fledged fight or flight response. So fight or flight, though, makes you feel great for the moment, temporarily, right? The sympathetic nervous system has turned on. Now, not the healing parasympathetic, but the sympathetic nervous system has turned on. That's fight or flight, that's survival mode, and everything starts to constrict. Tension starts to get up, but your focus increases. Now, to keep in mind, these are all the things that the biohackers like. They enjoy these things because it adds focus, it adds attention, it increases things like dopamine, norepinephrine, and then, it, though, it starts to burn out cortisol, it starts to burn out serotonin, because your body has to play this delicate balancing act, and it always is trying to maintain equilibrium. So here's the thing. In the short term, fasting and skipping breakfast can feel absolutely fantastic. You can feel great. And honestly, it's almost like you become like just a stress addict. Like you enjoy that. The more stress, the more revved up you feel and you get more and more work done. But the problem is this, eventually your immune system starts to suffer. You become more irritable. Your mood starts to go down. Your libido starts to decrease. You have issues with insomnia. You might get night sweating. Women might get what's called estrogen dominance. Guys get reduced testosterone, reduced DHEA. All of these things are unbelievably important in terms of anti-aging and in terms of long-term health. So yes, you could feel great for a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months, or maybe even a year, but long-term ketosis or long-term intermittent fasting, meaning like that you're going that long without eating is not ideal. And the reason is this, in the short term, yes, you feel good, but in the long term, not good. So here's where I want to differentiate. Here's what I want to leave you with. Why would I then recommend intermittent fasting for 12 hours overnight? Well, here's why. After dinner... I want you to allow things to just cool down. Cool, turn off the engine. Cool things down. Watch a little TV, not the news, but just one of your favorite shows, a documentary, read a book, stretch, breathe, meditate, do whatever it is that you enjoy to unwind. Turn off that sympathetic nervous system. Turn off the fight or flight. That is the aging process. Turn that off. Turn on the parasympathetic, which if you learn to close your eyes, you learn to belly breathe, you learn to take Epsom salt baths, that you relax. That will help you you then get into a deeper rejuvenating sleep as well. So what I'm talking about is 12 hours overnight. That might sound like a long time, but it's really not. All you have to do is this. Stop eating two hours before bed. That's all you have to do. Two to three hours before bed. Stop eating at seven, go to bed around 10, and then you're going to wake up, let's say six o'clock the next morning. Then what I recommend is you wake up, you then just have basically zero calories. I just re usually recommend some warm water or some room temperature water, squeeze some fresh lemon in that. And if you have adrenal-based issues, you have chronic fatigue, a pinch of Himalayan sea salt or rock salt or real salt or Celtic salt, whatever your favorite salt is, just not table salt. And you're going to just drink that down. Now, I also put in my daily fruit and vegetable blend, sometimes the greens powder, but a lot of times I put that in my smoothie about an hour later. So if you're waking up at six, you just start to use that 
lemon water. What that does, that helps that helps actually to soften bile. That helps you cleanse the liver. That helps to acidify the stomach and then alkalize the body. And by alkalize the body, I mean just bring more minerals to it, bring more negative ions to it, help to recirculate that blood, help to break up red blood cell agglutination, which is that stickiness, that sluggishness. And it's like natural Gatorade if you do the potassium from the lemon and a little bit of that pinch of sea salt as well. So then what I do is I just get, then I just start my day. I get my engine moving, but not stressed. Again, tune into previous Mindset and Motivation Mondays. I talk about how I ease into the day. That's been one of the biggest transformations for me is that waking up that 20, 30 minutes earlier. So then I just get in the shower, I get my body, I just, I get ready for the day. After that, that's when I make my smoothie. That's when I add my daily nutritional support. I add my big cup of frozen blueberries. I add my daily fruit and vegetable blend, which is my greens. I add all that good stuff in this just really hydrating smoothie. And what that does as well, because here's what another a lot of people get wrong, is they don't hydrate their body. They haven't drank anything for 8 to 10 to 11, 12 hours, and their body needs to be flushed. You need to flush out all of those acids. Your body removes waste at night. All of those wastes are called acids. And what your body has to do is flush that. It has to move the lymphatic system. Really important to do that. So that's super, super important. But what a lot of people do is they just drink coffee. Now, again, these biohackers, they're putting in MCTs and they're putting in butter and they're putting in all these things in their coffee. Fine, but that's not balanced. If you're only doing coffee and you're doing all of those things, again, you're just pushing cortisol to another level. So now you're fasted. Now you're stressed because you're going to work, getting your kids ready. Your cortisol is already high. Now you're drinking caffeine, which spikes cortisol and adrenaline to an even greater level. Do you see how this would make you feel great in the short term because it would get you revved up, but really poor in the long term, especially considering that increased cortisol decreases secretory IgA, which is your main first re- immune response. You're going to lower your immunity, which is going to leave you more susceptible to all of these issues later in life. So please do, do yourself a favor. This is literally just what I call like a public service announcement. I'm just trying to help. I have no agenda. I can't sell you intermittent fasting or not, right? It's all of ours to use. That's the beauty of it. This is science that we all get to benefit from. But what I'm telling you is this. Do the 12 hour overnight fast, but most people should eat in about one to two hours after waking to start to cut cortisol levels to give their body the nutrition that it needs. And you could you can decide on your own macros from there. And that's going to be best for most people. Now, let's say in a weekend that you are relaxed or you take a day off from work or whatever it is, you could actually do a 24 hour fast. You could do a 24 hour intermittent fast. I mean, like you could fast from six o'clock the night before to six o'clock that next night. That would be totally fine to do. Or 36 hours where you just go that whole next day with just drinking hot water, sipping hot water every 15 minutes. I'll get to that in the future. Or hot water and lemon. Move that lymphatic system. Start to, again, take advantage of the autophagy, but you have to be at rest. You have to be watching like comedies all day on your couch, or you need to be just lying in bed. You can't do anything stressful because, again, you're in that fasted state, so you don't want to spike cortisol levels. So do I believe in longer fasts? Yes, I do. But again, appropriate use of that. If you're already stressed, and you're adding more stress to it by doing an intermittent fast because remember, if you're not eating, your body goes into survival mode. You haven't given it any food. It thinks that it could be without food, that there might be famine. That's going to cause stress. That's going to rise in cortisol. It's doing you a favor and it's doing you a favor to get you hyper-focused, hyper-vigilant so that you can find that food that you can get. You can make the right decisions that you need to. But again, in long term, you will burn yourself out. So I know there's so much more I could cover on this topic, but really, I want to simplify the process. I want to make it easy for you. You're going to get the most benefit from the long run by doing a 12-hour overnight fast, flush your body that next morning with lemon water and hopefully a good smoothie or, or something like that. Again, you can decide what's best for you, but I just want to talk about the fast today. And if you want to do a longer intermittent fast, whether it's 16 hours until lunch or whether it's 24 hours until dinner that next night, dinner to dinner, or whether it's overnight from dinner one night to then breakfast in another 36 hours, you could do that as well. Just make sure you're in a relaxed place. Maybe you're on a retreat. Maybe you're just sleeping in. Maybe you're just watching movies. Maybe you're, you know, you're just decide to, to binge watch on a Netflix series, whatever it is that you're doing, but you have to be in that relaxed state. It cannot be in a more stressful situation because you will only compound stress on top of stress on top of stress, and that will not benefit you in the long run. And again, most people are intermittent fasting for weight loss, for wellness, and for overall anti-aging benefits. So again, use this to the maximum benefit that you can. I really do hope that this show was helpful. And if I missed anything, if I forgot anything, if I didn't answer your question in the right way, please do feel 
feel free to write into me at stevencabral.com forward slash ask Cabral. And I'd be happy to um, go back over and reiterate anything that I may have missed. And if this show was helpful, you know, a lot of friends that might be intermittent fasting right now, please do feel free to share this information with them because really in the long term, they are really doing themselves serious harm. And they can test that by simply doing adrenal stress test as well on those fasted days. And they can see how high their cortisol levels are if they really don't believe the data. All right. Take care, everyone. I could talk forever, but we'll keep it at that for today. Take care. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real-world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm going to teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my Health Results Accelerators. Simply choose the health imbalance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.